We were on our way back to London from Marrakesh. And on checking the budget airline destinations, decided to take a look at Girona, Catalonia, Spain. It was a pleasant surprise. It did afford all the niceties that mollycoddled travelers like myself crave. A nice hotel, a good breakfast, good coffee, and Wi-Fi. Great breakfast. It has character, beautiful streets, The river running through the center of the town and plenty of great restaurants. In fact, the number one Michelin restaurant in the world is here. Furthermore, Girona is consistently voted by the citizens of Spain as the most preferred city in which to live. It has a number of historical sites that are fascinating, though in a sense, the whole place is historical. The Jewish quarter, the churches, the buildings, the bridges. I noticed one of them seems out of place. Iron, not stone more ugly than graceful and begin to understand how the people of Paris must have felt when its creator designed a tower for them. You guessed, this bridge might well have been called the Eiffel Bridge. Gustav Eiffel built it in 1876 and yes, he's the culprit who built the tower in Paris. It's no ordinary city, so take a long look, but read between the lines and listen to the voices of the past, or you'll miss out. So as you look, imagine. We need to go back over a thousand years, but first, what about the food? All right, we're in Girona, one of the main streets with all the shopping boutiques, nice alfresco restaurants. Ours is La Carda. We got some seafood paella coming on the way. Great location, good variety of starters, all beautifully presented. Paella, a must. Desserts, delicious. The first known inhabitants of the region were Iberians. Later, the Romans arrived and built a citadel, which was given the name Gerunda. Then the Visigoths and the Moors ruled here. And in 785, Charlemagne, king of the Franks, conquered it. Charlemagne means Charles the Great. He was the son of Pepin the Short. I'm not joking. Napoleon's armies tried twice to conquer it and failed, hence the monument in Independence Square. Interestingly enough, two units of Irish soldiers helped to repulse the French. And yes, it all happened here by the river.
The 12th century saw a flourishing of the Jewish community of Girona, with one of the most important Kabbalistic schools in Europe being here. They are the people who eagerly devour sacred Jewish texts and figure out ancient Jewish codes. The rabbi of Girona, Moses ben Nachman, or Namanides, was appointed great rabbi of Catalonia. Some say it's the birthplace of Kabbalah. Others say that was the other Moses. The ultimate demise of the Jewish community here came in 1492, when the Catholic rulers expelled all Jews from Catalonia. Most traces of Girona's rich history were obliterated when the Jews were expelled from Spain. But in reality, it's difficult to make buildings disappear. Fascinating facts surround this part of the old town called El Cai, the old Jewish quarter. In medieval times, as in many European cities, there emerged thriving Jewish communities. They lived here, had their synagogue, their homes, the butcher selling kosher meat, their schools, even baths. The Jewish community here was second only to Barcelona in Catalonia. Girona has even been called the mother of Israel. But in 1492, as in the rest of Spain, all Jews had to leave the country if they didn't convert to Catholicism. Parts of the Kai are indeed very old. It's a maze of cobbled streets with the high buildings creating deep alleys. So don't miss a stroll through this historic area. An interesting item is the coat of arms of Girona. The motto being Girona Menomora. I fall in love with Girona. Believe it or not, the ancient cathedral, which stood on the site of the present one, was used by the Moors as a mosque, and after their final expulsion, was entirely rebuilt. The present building is Catalan Gothic architecture. The entrance is by 86 steps that form a formidable staircase. The small square at the foot of the steps is a great place to have a coffee and take in the sight. Inside, it's beautiful. Buildings started in 1038 and continued for six centuries. So there are different styles. The first building was built in Romanesque style, but redesigned in 1312. Okay, a little about Girona. It's a city of Catalonia in the northeast of Spain that now has a population of over a hundred thousand. 
the good news and the bad news, depending on who you are, is that the budget airlines fly here. They speak Castilian Spanish and are good at football. It has a temperate subtropical climate. In winter, it's okay, but can get quite cold. In summer, it's hot. Rain? Don't worry. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane, as the pilot will tell you if it's raining when you land. We hired a car and decided to get the overview from the top of the hill. Beautiful view. We could probably see the hills of southern France and certainly could see the now rebuilt Roman wall. By the way, the bells you hear were signaling the proclamation of King Felipe VI of Spain in Madrid. What a day, beautiful sunshine, 29 degrees, 1254, 19th of June, 2014. Felipe VI used to be the Prince of Girona, but it didn't seem like they were celebrating much. We decided to take a walk through the city. Not so much a walking tour as a quiet stroll, taking in the beauty of this place and soaking in the history. Pass through the Placa Santa Susana and the Catholic Church that gives its name to it. Then through the narrow streets toward the river. Some interesting shopping areas and old buildings on the way. Girona is well known for the picturesque houses overlooking the river Onya. They were built from the Middle Ages onwards and so exhibit different styles. The bridges are the best viewing points from where we can admire the scene. The houses tend to give a feel of the Mediterranean with facades painted in pastel shades according to a palette created by a group of architects. Amazing. The colors certainly look great. We were soon in the old town, La Rambla. This is a street parallel to the river, and the home of many street cafes and restaurants. It's a tree-lined avenue with alfresco dining, upmarket shops, and interesting arcades. It's on the east bank of the river, the narrow streets are now a pedestrian precinct surrounded by the old city walls. And here's my selfie. As I walked into the Placa de la Independencia or Independence Square for the first time, I remember thinking it has a totally different feel to it. A little more modern, but has a great charm about it. The arches, the lamps, the actual buildings are majestic, and the dining and atmosphere really attractive. It's mainly al fresco dining, and is not unlike Venice or Paris, but it's not like them either if that makes sense. Not as busy as Barcelona, but grander than La Rambla. 
perhaps the heart of Girona, and a beautiful place to spend an hour or two with many restaurants and cafes. Any travel destination with so many great restaurants has to be high up on the list of places to visit. Girona is definitely a top destination in this respect, but has so much more to offer. <laughs>